projecting. Okay, awesome. Um, so this is the first one of our regularly scheduled calls. I think the last one was a, as a one-off and, and then I created this one to, to be rolling every month. So we'll see how the time goes. I know that um, at least one person couldn't make it um, and I'm trying to remember who, who it was. I think it was John. I think it was John who said he couldn't make the time regularly. So I will keep him updated, but if it turns out not to work for multiple people, then um, perhaps we can look again at finding a time. It can be tricky, <laughs> as with all these things. Um, all right, housekeeping wise, um, it hasn't changed, but if you are new, just bear in mind that it's recorded, it's going to be shared afterwards, um, and to be, you know, assume good intent, be nice to people, all those things, okay? A little reminder, because it has been a month, um, the Enterprise Working Group, we're really looking at what could we do to make the enterprise experience better as uh, when you want to use FreeBSD on a general purpose enterprise server. So we're kind of into, um, we've done all the setup phase, maybe I'll change this slide so we don't have to, to look at it every time, but we've, we've, we're, we've done the setup phase and we're really in, in the realms of following the work streams along and seeing how we're getting on with them. And we're aiming to make good progress with priority projects and document and publish updates. Um, all right, so let's have a look. Um, I think I just covered some of this, didn't I? But yeah, so we're focusing on a set of features, onboarding developers and users. And we've got um, some success metrics, um, staff development plans is something that we're looking for, steady or growing number of participants, um, which that would be an interesting thing to analyze. I haven't, I haven't done that yet, but it, it feels like we do have a good um, regular uh, group of people who are coming. And um, yeah, I think some of these things we haven't circle back on to see how we're getting on with them but that's something that I can start to look at a bit more as we or as I get more settled in. All right um, we have the following focus areas oh, I guess I was searching for OpenJDK okay um, we have feature gaps and infrastructure gaps um, these they haven't changed on this slide but I think we have actually added a little bit to them as we've gone along so maybe this slide needs updating slightly um, and then we can move into talking about status. So you'll see like actually, this is how I like to present with all the slides out. Um, all this, the long tail slides that we have now, I've um, killed them. <laughs> it doesn't mean that we don't talk about all the same things, but I've put them into a spreadsheet because uh, I think it would be nice for us to be able to have a, a sort of living document that is the same in every call um, and isn't, uh, you know, repetition of slides and, and information is kind of lost in the previous meeting slides. And I want to keep um, that history of the slide of the meetings all in one work stream, sorry, all in one spreadsheet. Um, it's also a place that I've made editable. So you can come and, you know, when you get these slides shared at the end of the call, you can click on this link to get to the tracker. You can add your updates if you want to. Um, I have gone through all the previous slide decks and captured all the history and added it in. I'm, I'm building it up, so you'll see it in a moment. Um, I might have not got it completely right. and I've mainly done it for the features and not for the infrastructure, just because I didn't have time to do all of it. And I may or may not go on to do the infrastructure bits as well, depending on how much we talk about those. Um, I've also broken out a list of tasks and actions that seem to have, have been written down at some point because I have no idea which ones of those were done, which ones are irrelevant now. Um, so it might be good for us to go through and say, do we still care about these things? If so, let's pick them up again. If not, we can just mark them as abandoned. Um, and yeah, I think I already said that. So it's up to date with features. So let me show you. Um, this is the spreadsheet. Now I'm just going to, I think I will make this one so that it's 
clipped just because it's quite a long update. But I'll walk you through the sheet so you can see how it's structured. Um, the features which we used to have, you know, a slide or a couple of slides per feature now has a, um, a row for each one. And if, if I were to, actually, I'm not at the top, let me start at the top. I've got Active Directory um, or AD DNS. So where we've, we've talked about what we've got now and where we want to go, that's now captured for each one of these. And, and that's something that I've taken from the slides that we already had. Um, as per the, this slide, I've got features and infrastructure as a tag. So one of the things Google's having a go at getting better at making its spreadsheets have more features. So if you've used Airtable or Smartsheets, it's not as good as that, but it's, it's, I think it's probably got a feat, it's probably got a roadmap for, for them and it's going to take them closer to that. But all to say, you can filter by some of these um, smart chips. Um, okay, so category feature or infrastructure, then status, which is pretty self-explanatory. Now there were some um, calculations, I guess, done on how difficult some of these tasks were and their priority rankings. So I've brought them over into here and they did have a single decimal place, which I have um, kind of just rounded up or down to give a, you know, a star rating or a, a ranking. The ranking was out of eight, but I couldn't really work out why. So that's not, that's not done as a star rating. I've tried to capture who's um, suggested that. I don't have the date, data for all of these. Some of them have come up during meetings and some of them I do know that a particular individual suggested them. So I've captured that so we can hopefully build a picture of like where these things have come from. I've got two columns, one for owner and one for developer. Now, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm not telling people what, what they should do or who should own what. This is supposed to be a reflection of like how things look at the moment. So it's it's very much a case of like, who am I going to look at and say, do you have an update? Let me just see if there's any chats going on. Oh, thanks, Greg. Appreciate yeah, that. Um, no problem. Yeah. Um, and then if there's a developer that's not the same person, then, you know, or an SME, then I've added that person's name in. And it really wants it really wants to know who those people are. So for some people, it will say, you know, that's not a person I recognize, so it's invalid input, but I just ignore that. So I encourage you to do the same. Then we move into updates. So it's sort of in reverse chronological. So the most recent update is going to be the one that's easiest to get to. It's right here. The first update, the first meeting update is all the way on the right here. It's got the date and it's also got a link to, um, I've created folders where I've put the slides and notes in that folder. I can just click on that and let you see what that looks like. Um, so you should be able to view that. Um, oh, someone's jumping about. Look at that. And um, yeah, and I've put the dates of when they were. Um, and you can see that they, they're more or less one a month. Um, so this just gives us the opportunity to see, um, you know, what, what's happened month to month and get a very quick readout um, and see whether there's been progress or not, um, which, you know, is interesting, particularly if you're new into the, the meeting or into the group. Um, any questions about this sheet? It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Give you that, send you that Venmo later. All right. Um, so uh, let me show you the other sheet then, tasks and actions. This is a little bit more hit and miss because um, it's re required me to notice where someone has said something that sounded like a task in one of the meeting slides and I didn't go through all the meeting notes as well so I I probably won't because I'm not sure I think it's a bit of a diminishing return so I encourage you to add things into here if you really want to or to ask me to do that and I'm happy to do that um we you can do a view on on status to see like what's in progress what's completed and then there's a whole bunch that I just had no idea. Um, you can also filter it by work streams if you want to see what tasks are aligned with what um, work stream. Um, I cap I've captured like when, 
were they noted? When did that first arise in the notes? Um, so, so yeah, we may come back to look at this as we go through updates. Um, I haven't completely decided like what's the best way to engage with this during the call. Um, whether we go through the through updates first and then look at tasks, or whether we flip back and forth, we'll see what works. Um, cool. Um, any questions about this tab? All right. Um, so you might notice that there are some other tabs which are work stream specific. Um, I, I'm I'm not sure that I'm going to keep them. Um, they were my, I, I was experimenting whether there was another layer of detail that was worth going into. I'm not sure that it, it is worth going into them um, because I sort of feel like that's an individual work stream management issue and that's probably beyond the scope of this group. Um, however, particularly for Beehive, I, I probably just went off of down a bit of a rabbit hole and started trying to complete this and I think this is what convinced me that it wasn't worth uh, the time. But um, if that's useful to anyone, please feel free to take it, adopt it. Um, if it's not useful, it may just die of death. So, But it was kind of helpful for me to understand what was going on with Beehive, so I don't think it's a complete um, rabbit hole. All right, what's going on in the chat? EBPF. All right. Okay, well, Beehive Sorry, Ava, you were a little bit um, choppy on the audio there. I don't know if it's just me. I can't. Yeah, can't no, it's, I, I'm, ex I'm also experiencing that um, having a, that we can hear that you're speaking, but we can't hear what you're saying. <clears throat> There's something about Beehive. Oh. Audio trouble, Good. Eva. <laughs> Reboot that. Log from the abandonment. Um, can you say more about what you mean by abandonment? Or unless okay. anyone else knows what that is, I'm afraid I don't know. Uh, the part that we were clicked on a minute ago. Uh, uh oh, yeah, still reboot that. We've had that come up on previous calls. Uh, do whatever magic you have to do to make your audio work. <laughs> It's Cyloning. I, I, it might be to do with that there was a status of abandonment, but I'm not sure if that was um, that was that. Yeah, the status of abandonment somewhere. Hmm. I don't think any of them would have that status. Hello? Oh, by, Beehive status. Live mi Migration. Live Migration. OK. OK. Let's see, live migration. Oh, this one. That one. Yeah. Oh, did I? Do I have a log for it? Good question. Where did I get that information from? I don't know. It, it's entirely possible. Well, let's. What happens if we click on that? Maybe it's just an error in my um, capturing. Well, it's technically uh, abandoned as a review. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> Authored by Amihai Karabash. That would have been a very early UPB one, so maybe it was um, fundamentally replaced by later work, my guess. Just overcome by events and later work. Hmm. So I guess it's kind of useful to have something like this because you can see at a glance what's going on, but um, and and we were able to click through and see you when we said that that exactly worked. having the links is fantastic. Good work. Um. All right, well, let's do this um, in some kind of a, an order. I'm just going to get rid of the order, the, uh, the filter view, and we'll take it from the top. So we want to go to August. Um, let's 
So is there, I know that John's not here and he hasn't provided me with an update. Is anyone else aware of an update for Active Directory DNS? I am not, and I, I, I would probably be, if anybody was going to have one, it would probably be me. Um, you know, the the good news is I think that this, you know, this particular work stream, you know, at least as of the last conversation is mostly a documentation effort. Yeah. Right, that there there does not seem to be a whole lot of development gaps. Um, you know, we'll we'll know whether that's how, how true that is, a hundred percent, eighty percent, fifty percent, whatever. The the more John gets into the project, but but I, I have a fairly high degree of confidence that it's well north of fifty percent true, probably more like eighty to ninety. Um, so. Uh, you know, that's, <clears throat> that's always good to hear, right? When, when the answer is, yeah, all the features are there. We just have to talk about how to use it together uh, and make sure that that's well-documented and easy to replicate. Yeah, so we do actually have some outstanding, or well, uh, let, let's say they're not outstanding, but I don't know what status they are, um, tasks that, I, that I've captured. So th this is quite an old one which is any volunteers mm -hmm. to discuss with, with Michael. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's happened because we had that call with- uh, Yeah, with, with John. Him? Yeah, so that we can yeah. we can close that. Um, right. Yep, Perfect. yep, that's closed. Um, and then- this... Yeah, that never happened. And I think that was probably my bad, Michael. I, um, I think I just, you know, ran Do out we... of brain cells at BSD. Do we camp. want to pick this back up? Um, you not alone you know, that. remotely, or is it not <laughs> worth doing? Uh, yeah, I would defer to Michael. If you think it's worth it to to try to do that async, um, or you know, or virtually, I guess I should say, uh, I would, I'd, I'd be very open to it. Um, I think that was as it related to live migration, but I could be wrong. Uh, well, I see the one on Daniel, and I see perhaps below. Uh, Daniel's a great resource on AD, and he and I were going to also talk, and that didn't happen. So yeah, I okay. will, will circle back on that. Okay. Yeah, that I, you're right. You're right. That is AD, not Behave. My bad. Yeah. Can I um, put your name on this one, then, Michael? Would that be uh, right? Uh, sure. Yes. <laughs> People are going to stop showing up if I, <laughs> if I surprise you with those kinds of questions. Um, all right, and that's not started. Okay. Um, and what did what was it that you were planning on talking about? He's a he's an Active Directory expert, so I think maybe it would be an opportunity to confirm that you know the Active Directory slash DNS integration capabilities are indeed there, and that it's mostly a documentation sort of configuration best practices exercise at this point, um, or if there are sort of feature gaps to, to potentially understand what those are. And do we define the DNS aspect here or other somewhere else? Um, it, yeah, there, there are, uh, on, on the wiki, um, there is a description of kind of each of these, okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, that would be the place to start. And if if you. if you don't find what you're looking for, let me know, and I could probably dig something up because I have all the all the notes going all the way back to the very initial conversations with. <clears throat> um, perfect, Michael Ospov. Uh, DNS spec is that what you were talking about? Or uh, just you know what the DNS aspect of this is, okay. um, and it, it you know it really has to do with like if you have a any reasonable sized enterprise where you need to, um, you know, have automated integration between your Active Directory and your DNS, um, like, you know, that just has to be configured because you, you know, it's it's impractical for for those configurations to be handled manually, um, so. But beyond that, I, I wouldn't be able to add much color. Yeah. 
I found it. There's the link. I'll I'll go down that rabbit hole. Thank Sweet. You. Yep. Um, okay, so this one sounds so this catalog all A D and DNS integration packages document usage. That's the task, right? That's how, what that sounds like. Is is that's mm -hmm. that's that's yep. to document everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do we know if that is started? Yeah, that's in progress. So so Hickson's working on that. Um, because he's going to be giving a presentation on this subject. Uh, he's going to give a talk at a conference. Um, I don't know which conference and I don't know when, but it sounded like it would be, you know, this year. And so, uh, you know, he's going to have to prepare for the presentation, which will give him the opportunity to, you know, basically do documentation. Yeah, conference-driven documentation. All right. Cool. Um, and then this one, so there was a conversation that um, between you, Greg, John, and Michael Ozipov about like what the enterprise enterprise requirements were. And I know that there are meeting mm -hmm. notes from that. But I don't mm -hmm. know what's ha whether there was anything that needed to be taken away from that and logged anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, um, I can I can just if you want to assign that to me. Uh, I will um, add the notes from that meeting to the spreadsheet. To which, what, to this spreadsheet? Yeah, is that all right? Okay. Can I just put a link in notes to, like, the meeting? Yeah, yeah, you can. I mean, I, I guess I don't know where the overall requirements are being kept for this work stream and right. whether that would need to be folded into that, because yeah. this isn't really the repository for requirements, I would say. Oh, um, well, you tell me, yeah. I mean, you know, I think, I mean, I think you, but oh, sorry, go ahead. It, I mean, if there's nowhere else to put it, sure. I mean, I'm guessing. Yeah. I suppose maybe this is this is part of the support that we can we can offer, which is to help to create a space for the requirements. Um, and if mm. there isn't anywhere for the requirements for yeah. some work streams, like I'm happy to help with that. Yeah, I mean, I think this one, because because the assumption right now is that there isn't development that's required. It's mm. it's a documentation task. The, the, the requirements are create clear documentation. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but if that, and, and, and that's what John's doing. So if that changes, right? And if we say, oh, actually there are some rough edges, then, then we can, circle back to requirements okay well that, that's so, fine. so that's, I mean, that's I, probably I, that that row is probably a a, a a legacy that's been overcome by the realization that there isn't actually development that needs to happen there so it might even make sense to delete that row i'm not sure uh yeah okay um what i will just say is we probably ought to have another one for um um duplicate or something like that uh, yeah just that maybe I, consolidate I some of those yeah or or even overcome like as is a, is a term that i've heard overcome. used but what does it mean well like you know just sort of like not needed anymore because of some reason but i don't care well, i mean i want to put uh pr i want to have my car um repainted but uh, i told it last week so <laughs> <laughs> this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But not needed works right. too, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um yeah. and then I'll just put a note in here. Um what's that? Plus two requirements for that. I don't like that because it now it sounds like requirements have something to do with it, but there we are. What can you do? Yeah. All right. Um so I think we've answered the question of do we flip between the two sheet between the two tabs? I think it makes sense to do it. So any more on, sorry, I'm moving around a lot. Any more about Active Directory and DNS? No, okay. Um, uh, Kerberos, so I had an update from Sai, and he says he is 60 to 70% through building make files and he's working through bugs it's, and he said it was slow going. Um, and I don't think we had any tasks for Kerberos. Not that I was 
not that I had captured anyway. Any one want to talk more about that? Okay, shall no. move along. Uh, so Samba or Samba, depending on how you like to say it. Um, so this is actually, I think, more or less the same update that we had last time, but it is a fresh version of it that John sent me, um, which is that he's he's in touch with the Samba team um, about getting Samba patches upstreamed, etc. Um, so let's see about any. So we had a couple of. Oh look, I didn't. Oh, that's not that's not right. Refresh. Let's try. Okay, that fixed it. Um, so I had an, from the same conversation that, that Greg, you and Michael had with John, um, there was some, there was some chat. I mean, I only looked at the notes, the meeting notes, so I don't know whether there were additional input from Michael that, that John was going to then take on board or not. Um, so this, what do you think? Does this require anyone to do anything or is it and an not, not needed at this point? Uh, do you remember the call? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know, honestly. But but I I think you know we should just you know I think if 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 John provides an update, we can wait. Uh, it's not, it's not a you problem. know then then we can include it. But but if he doesn't, then I don't. I don't. I'm certainly not qualified to answer those questions. Um, I think he's probably. The best person to do that. Um, yeah. You know, the only other comment that I'll make on this row is that this is related to the uh, long saga of getting .NET support for FreeBSD, which uh, you know has um, been a long-term effort of mine and uh, and Ed's, and you know we've had sort of halting sort of one step forward, two step back, three step forward, one step back kind of progress. Um, but but I'm, I'm optimistic that it's moving in the right direction. I wish it was moving faster, uh, but I, I feel pretty good about, you know, the, the direction that we're headed in. Um, and, and it matters because Samba, like so many other big open source projects is hosted on GitHub. And, and they use GitHub Actions for their CI CD. And mm -hmm. GitHub Actions is written in .NET. And because there is not a level of support for FreeBSD in .NET that is sufficiently high, uh, GitHub won't add support for FreeBSD uh, in GitHub Actions, uh, which just kind of complicates patch merging um, because the Samba team can't use the same CI CD that they use for everything else to test, to make sure that FreeBSD patches for Samba want, um, you know, uh, to, to, to be merged upstream. Um, so, so anyway, um, yeah, but if anybody is, connected to the .NET team, has expertise in this area, you know, would like to learn more about where we are and what can be done to uh, help with this, just send me an email. And Greg, are you in touch with Jonas who presented at EuroBSDCon on that topic? Uh, tell me where Jonas works. Uh, Beckoff, I put the link. Oh, in the notes yeah, there. oh yes, for sure. Okay, great. Y y yeah, absolutely. I mean, Fantastic. you know, and and, th and that was one of the very first things that we did was we said, hey, there are, you know, commercial paying customers of products like Azure DevOps that need to be able to test patches patches across a heterogeneous environment consisting of Windows and FreeBSD. And the fact that GitHub Actions doesn't support FreeBSD creates a real headache for them. GitHub is a, you know, Microsoft is a massive company. GitHub is a massive company in its own right. And uh, I, yeah, but I, I oh yeah. <laughs> you would think that that would convince people. Let me stop there.
since this is being recorded. Do you, you want this as an action or is it you've tried it already? I can delete it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can capture it if you want to for the notes, but yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, that, that ground has been well trod. I think my broader point there is that we have topics with uh, subject matter experts and point people. So if we're missing John, we it's going to be a challenge to discuss the John topics, et cetera. Um, right. Um, so do you mean that we could invite Jonas to this call? Or is that not really the right sort of angle? It, the way I understand, Michael, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you know, for purposes of pushing along .NET support for FreeBSD, Jonas might be a, a subject matter expert slash ally. Completely and totally agree. <clears throat> um, but it's it's really only sort of that whole .NET question is only tangentially related to Samba. Samba is just a really good example of one of the software projects that. where FreeBSD's ability to upstream patches is hindered by, wow. right? Uh, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to bring it up because, Woodworth you know, John, also, go ahead. Woodworth also uh, help with the experiment to allow uh, GitHub pull requests against the FreeBSD repository mm -hmm. mirror. I don't think it affects the pull request. No, it's specific to a, a product uh, within GitHub called GitHub Actions, which is their built-in I mean, CI CD. Could the team accepting those requests then use GitHub Actions to run regression tests, for example, against the pull request branch? I'm really not sure, honestly. Maybe, I don't know. Um, let's let's see whether we can. Um, There's find a, a time resounding John. yes from Eva in chat. So <laughs> it sounds so it's like uh, this would be possible, and that this would be a major improvement because then you could have this tooling in the repository for someone who wants to submit a pull request to be able to have GitHub run the tests associated with a pull request and show, yeah, I'm passing my tests and it builds. Yeah. Instead could of they, having to do it at hoc. Could somebody write a note that I can put in, in this, um, like a short sentence that I can add to the um, update here, just so that we have this captured to, uh, for the record? Because I'm not sure I was following exactly yeah. um, what the suggestion was. Yeah, same here. I think that would be a good one if, if someone could you know, maybe uh, Jan and Eva, if you could, you know, kind of put your brains together, kind of, and provide a quick update and and drop it, either drop it in the spreadsheet directly or whatever, because, yeah, like I, I know enough about uh, that whole situation to be dangerous, but like I am very dangerous because like it's, it's highly complicated and um, I'm just trying to, uh, do everything that I possibly can to move it in the direction that I know it needs to go, but like how it all works. Uh, it, frankly, I it, it, uh, a lot of that detail is lost on me. All right. Um, well, that would be great if 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 somebody would be willing to to do that. Um, it sounds like there's probably a little bit more of a chat to be had about it. And then if it sounds like there's a route forwards there, like let's get that captured. Um, feel free to, you know, amend this spreadsheet as you see fit. If you're not sure how it works, just give me a shout and I'll put it in or I'll, I'll work with you on it. And Tara um, had a good point in chat. So hmm. I can jump in in context there that uh, what are the motivators and motivating companies? Because it sounds like maybe Microsoft management needs to see who has this on their radar beyond just the FreeBSD project. So, 
and Greg might be in touch with those people. Yeah, um, I do. I don't. I don't have it all off the top of my head, but um, but uh, but but the the answer is yes. I mean, and you know, and the really good news is we have some very strong allies within Microsoft. Oh. Um, there's uh, you know somebody. So so the com- the part of Microsoft that provides funding support to the FreeBSD Foundation. It's not a lot. It's twenty thousand dollars a year. Is on is is sort of funnily enough the part of the Linux team within Azure, and okay. there's a new uh, developer over there who has been able to determine that um, actually a significant number of uh, instances of FreeBSD on Azure had been historically mis. Uh, mischaracterized, misaccounted as Linux. And so when that was when that analysis was done and that mischaracterization was corrected, um, it was very eye-opening to a lot of people within Microsoft that there really is much more FreeBSD usage on Azure than they had previously thought. Um, and so, you know, th- th- there there's that, then there's there's the the sort of Azure version of GitHub Actions, which is called Azure DevOps. Um, And there are uh, a good number of customers that sort of enterprise customers that use FreeBSD that use that product, Beckoff, uh, Dell, um, so Dell FinOS is based on FreeBSD and they also uh, use that. Um, so there's, there's a few, but, uh, Tara, let me, let me go back to my notes and I'll send a, um, send an update. Right. Um, and I'll just, I'll just share it so that it's part of the record here with the enterprise working group. Okay. Sorry, I'm gonna have to go put myself on mute. Otherwise we're never going to finish in an hour. No, well, we do, we do, we, it's a great chat and the time is flying so let's um let's just see what else there is to cover um and any help to kind of backfill the comments and discussion is much appreciated um and if you want to actually just write free form you can click on this link here with meeting slides and notes and the there's a doc there there's not a lot going into it right now just because most of it's going into this but if you have general comments that you don't know where to put them you can certainly add it there <clears throat> All right, so we talked about that, we talked about that, eBPF. Um, we had a little chat about this last time. It sounds like something that we'll, we'll come to later um, when we have the OCI runtime in place and there isn't like a driving need for this right now. If you go back through all the history, like it's there's never been any update on it. So if nobody's asking for it and nobody's moved to do something, then I suspect like, we'll just keep it on. We'll, we'll give it a, a minute every month and we'll see what happens. Anyone disagree? Suggest some alternative approach? All right. Um, so SMBFS, I can say it now, um, driver, two or three driver in kernel, I think we are basically in the same position as last time, which is that we're looking for a donation and we haven't um, made any progress on it yet. And I don't think we had any actions for that one. So, um, OpenJDK, I don't think there's not any update again since last time. Um, there oh, any actions? I don't think so. No. Yeah. I mean, this really. What do you think, Greg, about this one? About Open JDK. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's we just can't find a developer. <laughs> like we have an open job rec, and we would hire somebody if 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 somebody came along who who could do the work. We. We extended an offer to uh, a developer, and um, 
and she turned it down. Uh, she, you know, got another job mm. and decided to do that. So, you know, if anybody knows anybody or, you know, has a connection into, you know, the JDK community uh, and, you know, can help us find somebody, that would be great. So, you know, it's, that, that's, that's basically where we are. Um, I'm going to put an action in for, because that was a year ago, nearly, well, not quite, but nearly, <laughs> it's getting up to being Q4 this year. Uh, don't, uh, it's not my fault, it's nearly Q4. I just, it's just the messenger. But I'm going to add um, a task for um, Greg, for you, me and Ed to talk about that and see what we want to do to move it forward or not move it forwards, you know, take another view on it, take another approach, you know. Um, otherwise, we'll just have the same thing every month, which is like nobody applied for the job. Um, I need to add one that look. Open JDK. All right, it's not capitalized. Maybe I'll fix that one day. And do turn to social media on that. People are always changing jobs. And if you're truly hiring with a budget, just let the world know. Don't be shy. Yeah, I posted it out. Okay. Like I posted it out on LinkedIn, <laughs> which is the only social media I have. But it was kind of just, you know, I, I think it's just not being really, I don't think it's being prioritized at the moment. And that's probably something that we need to talk about. Um, to see, like, if we want to put some more effort into it. Um, all right, uh, Cloud Native, I really want to get to this because um, mm -hmm. we've, we've got great progress to share. Oh, I'm in the wrong column, hang on. Um, so, yay, um, and thanks to Tara particularly for helping on this one. Um, we now have um, a test project with dates and a repo. Um, and so this is a little bit of text that we would like anyone who feels moved to, to share. I mean, put some line breaks in it. They seem to have disappeared. Um, but we're running a test project on Podman, Podman, um, on FreeBSD from September the 2nd to October the 11th. And we have a repo with all the information. So anyone who would like to get involved or anyone who'd like to help us find people get involved, that's what's happening. And um, Tara has been very helpful in um, helping me to fix up the readme and putting pull requests in and also working on images. So we have some more up-to-date images for folks to use, which is just fantastic. And she's been great at um, hassling Doug because <laughs> he responds to her, it seems. <laughs> so good news all around. Um, and I think... I already have the actions um, complete, complete. We haven't got the requirements yet, so I can't make that one complete. Um, any questions on that one? All right. Doug made the real work. He's not here though. <laughs> um, so .NET support and GitHub actions. I think this yeah. is sort of your update, Greg, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we, we covered it. We 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 beat oh, we that. We covered it already. We all beat right. we beat that horse all the way. Um, um, ah, who's put, who put this comment in? FreeBSD management by API. Cam Mill Cam. What's that say? There's an email address there. Oh, Carmi. That would be Carmi. 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 Yeah, Carmi. Carmi's been very well. I've interacted with Carmi in the OCI uh, runtime extension working group. Yeah, but somebody's added an update. This is a wonderful idea, and I'd love to extend my existing IP API libraries. So who put that? I'm looking. Mm. Oh, no one who's present. That's right. Interesting. Okay. Oh, Ava at the bottom. Oh, I <laughs> see. You see the document oh, Ava, thank you. Ava. Yes, thank you, Ava. Ah, uh, thank you. Um, so. So Ava, have you met Kami? I know you I have not. Been. All right. So maybe um, maybe we should um, get you together with Kami to chat about it. 
Yeah. Did I? He's a super interesting guy. He, he, his background is a uh, sort of technology chief, chief technology officer type person uh, in, in the entertainment industry, right? Uh, LA, um, big, big studios, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, another West Coaster, so um, same time zone. All right, I'll put myself down to connect the two of you if you're interested in doing that. Does that sound good? Yeah, that would be great. Perfect. Um, I have to remember to come and read the list of things to do. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be here in a month and I won't have done it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, AI support. Yeah, I didn't um, put any up I didn't have any updates ready for that. But Greg, do you want to speak about it? In fact, I wasn't completely sure whether these three, sorry, they're too wide, aren't they? These rows. Um, AI support CPU, AI support CUDA, and NVIDIA GPU support. I, uh -huh. I think yeah. this one's been broken out into these two. Is that right? Or is it? I mean, mm. I, I'd have to go in and look at it and really all see right. and think about like whether that could be consolidated. But it's all pretty much the same concept. I mean, you can do AI without NVIDIA, but, but not not a lot of people are like most of the industry right is deploying ai on nvidia and as of this moment freebsd is not an option um so we would like to change that and uh changing that will be expensive um uh <clears throat> and will require a community effort so uh there's a couple of things happening. Um, I have uh, been in conversations with NVIDIA. They would like to donate some hardware and support uh, and, and also provide the hosting of that, which we could then use to develop against. So um, there is a sort of proof of concept running CUDA uh, using the Linux emulator in a FreeBSD jail, which yeah. which works, yeah. but it you know isn't isn't easy, right? It's not reproducible. You can't just like install it uh, from from ports. So that would be a good first step. Would be to take that proof of concept and get it more ready for anybody to use. Clearly, the the ideal long term solution would be to have a native uh, CUDA port for FreeBSD. But I think if we can get the current uh, proof of concept of CUDA running in a jail, use that would that would be a really big step forward. Um, there have also been some contributions from Netflix uh, on some of the the DPU drivers, so the data processing unit. Uh, these and I forget the name of the specific cards from Nvidia, but these are really expensive. Uh, where you know you can do a lot of the acceleration, um, kind of like at the network card layer. Uh, <clears throat> those those uh, con code contributions, those patches uh, from uh, Netflix need to be uh, generalized a little bit. They don't. They're not really fully sort of featured. So that would be another thing. So what we're what we're trying to do is bring together uh, the FreeBSD based vendors that want these capabilities um, and get them to pitch in some money and some developer resources to get this lab off the ground. So NVIDIA would donate the equipment, NVIDIA would uh, you know pay for the hosting. And then you know vendors that whose products are based on FreeBSD would contribute funds and developer time. And then the, the lab outputs would be the code products that I just described. Um, and, and also like, you know, kind of uh, architectural guides and, you know, reference architectures and stuff like that. Um, but we would also importantly make the lab available uh, to the community to develop against um, and test use cases, right? Build 
additional drivers, whatever the community decides they want and need to do. Um, so that's that's what I'm what I'm working on. Uh, there is another uh, effort underway to um, give uh, to 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 kind of do not the the development work that I described, but but just give access to the FreeBSD community to um, you know kind of like a multi-tenant shared uh, set of um, NVIDIA-based AI gear. Um, and I'm hoping that, that we will be able to announce that in the relatively near future. Um, so those are the two pieces that are going on right now as it relates to AI. Um, see you, Jan. Right. Yep. Oh, and um, I'm looking in the notes here. That's exactly right. There, Jan. I know you needed to drop, so you probably aren't hearing this, but you're you're 100 correct that there are no required kernel driver features that are missing. Um, it's just a matter of the fact that CUDA is proprietary software. We can't port it to FreeBSD, even if we wanted to, even if it would be a relatively easy thing to do. We can't because we don't have access to the code. So Nvidia has to be convinced that this is something that should be done, and so we're working on it. Um, and then, Greg, hello. is it all right if, if I interrupt you just because we are about to be out of time and, and Michael yeah. um, had an update on Beehive. Yeah. Um, and I know if two minutes is enough, Michael. Um, I'm, I'll have to think about how we structure this call time-wise at, at the moment, Beehive's in the second section. Uh, unfortunately, Beehive gets pretty good coverage every week with the production user calls, but uh, there was a very pleasant surprise last week that Hans has a working prototype of, of TPM emulation. I've put the review link into the chat and Corvin Cohn of Beckhoff is giving feedback, which is precisely the person on the planet I'd love to see giving feedback. So that it, watch this space. For, for those of us who are less initiated, could you just briefly describe what this does? Oh, and good who, idea. Like, yes. who it benefits? So... Um, the the leading narrative around TPM is that Windows 11 requires uh, the TPM module trusted computing module or something uh, on hardware to save keys for like disk encryption, etc. And Corvin with Beckhoff had, has kindly made in 14, I believe, TPM pass through available so that on a on a in their case a desktop you can pass the device through. FreeBSD to a Windows virtual machine and have the benefits of it. Uh, that allows one device to be shared with one uh, virtual machine. But with the emulation, there is a, I believe MIT licensed payload out of IBM of all places. And uh, following the example of QEMU, the popular sort of Linux-based emulator and now virtualization front end, uh, that allows for any virtual machine to have its own software TPM. And uh, in the calls, we've been discussing how to have, say, encryption keys in there. It's found a use of Tmux session storage and hopefully ZFS keys. So um, that hopefully will open some new doors for a, 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 a neat, a useful encryption store and possibly entropy store for virtual machines. And there were discussions such as sharing them between multiple machines, have it read only. And so it's a fascinating uh, small technology with perhaps some very clever uses. On the got it, got it. So, so it's, a, it's okay, thank you. So it's, sure. it's um, so, so with this, it's easier to use Beehive as part of a mixed uh, environment that includes Windows and, and be compliant with, take advantage of this encryption technique um, and do it in a manner that's scalable. Would that summarize it? It is, yes. Sort of the, 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 the popular narrative is simply to run Windows 11. But in looking closer, there are some very clever uses from a more Unix perspective, like, well, how do we have our, our common encryption keys for a bunch of VMs that we can pass that? So it, gotcha, it, gotcha. It's, uh, hopefully some great things will come out of this. Sweet. 
but but it's not it, it, just to be clear and just to make sure that I'm understanding it's not it's not it's not related to manageability of beehive. Uh, no, it's not. It is a fundamental okay. underlying feature. Okay. Okay. Because, because yeah, like we're, you know, this group, because you sure. do so much amazing work on Beehive and and I try to, it, what I end up, ends up happening to me when I join your calls is, you know, my brain gets full five minutes in. <laughs> um, no worries. But, but, but the only thing that, that is Beehive related that this group has ever been interested in is the manageability aspect of it. Because that okay. seems to be a barrier to, anybody who is coming from say VMware to even being able to try Beehive, they can't, they can't get over that first hurdle. Right. Got it. Yep. So, so just, just to try to make sure that we're, we're all on the sure. same page there. All right. Um, well, we may just have time to say that um, we now have, oh, where is it? CIS. Huh. We now have. Oh, can't find the second. Achieved CIS for FreeBSD fourteen. That's on live seventeen. Thank you. Um. So, so oh, well, we've we've got the benchmark. We're now. Um. What would you call it? Certified. <laughs> Certifiable. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's just a it's a you know, this is a good example of, of kind of what I was just talking about previously, which is, you know, there may be a lot of enterprises, there are certainly a lot of enterprises out there who would love to be able to explore how they can take advantage of FreeBSD, but without a CIS benchmark, they, they could never even open the door because their CIO or their CISO has it in their little checkbox to say, do you have a CIS hardening guide? Because we must have them for every key sort of platform technology that we deploy within our enterprise. So this just allows us to say, yep, we've got it. Um, and I know we're over and I know I, I'm, I'm probably more responsible for that than anybody. Um, but I, I do just want to very quickly say, and, and I don't know, Alice, if you don't mind bringing up the slides super quick, if, you, if you're able to do yeah, that. Yeah, of course. And go back to the one that has all the little boxes of the things that we're going to do. There's the features and the infrastructure. Like that? Yeah, perfect. So we will have more information on this next week. So it's a bit of a tease, but I am, I am so excited that I can't not say something. So, we, you know, in part informed by the feedback that we received through this group, we uh, we included the things that this group, some of the things that this group identified as being needed um, uh, in a grant application, which uh, we just finally uh, got the contract signed on Monday. And so the announcement will be next week, but it is gonna allow us to attack things like zero trust package builds, like SBOM, uh, even things like you know, not exactly layered repo support, but that should be a, a nice, uh, it, it'll be a much shorter pa path to achieve that <clears throat> once we um, once we do the work that this grant is gonna allow us to pursue. So um, stay tuned. Uh, we were, you know, thinking that we can probably put the announcement out Monday or Tuesday of next week. It's very exciting. <laughs> Can't say anything about it yet. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I won't. Um, I won't keep talking because you probably all have things to go and do, and maybe other meetings to attend. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Um, and I'll see you in the next call. Yeah. Thanks so much, Alice. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.